Back when Ryzen 7000 launched, we did a video about how much cooling do you need to get each of the new chips running without the risk of it thermal throttling like ever. Well, I really liked the idea and apparently so did a lot of you out there. So let's continue the list with how much cooling do I really need to make the 13600K run under all circumstances. The setup is really easy. We took our ASRock Z790 Steel Legend, slapped the 13600K in there, and a 4090. Though the 4090 is actually just a display adapter today. Then we set the CPU to run at absolute max out of the box. And that's really important because what we are not doing today is an overclocking guide. No, what we wanted to find out is the amount of needed cooling at out of the box clock speed. Nothing beyond that. Just how much is advertised, can it push that much indefinitely. So we set the P cores to 5.1 and E cores to 3.9 GHz. Then we enabled all of the turbo and then speed boost and XMP because we needed that. And the only thing we disabled was that Intel speed step thing. The reason for that is because it's freaking annoying. That thing just reduces practically everything after like a minute or two, which is really not what we want. We wanted to know what CPU cooler can survive a permanent boost clock. So the stage is set, 5.1 and 3.9 gigahertz. Everything's still on auto because we are still out of the box. And a total of 183 watts package power for an i5. What the hell? At this point, let me introduce our CPU cooler reference list. This is the chart created by our standard CPU cooler benchmark. And the thing is that it was created using a 3900X at 135 watts, which of course is not a 13600K. So we removed all of the values, all of the scales, but what we can still do with it is use it as a reference list to how coolers perform in relation to each other. Therefore, what we can do is pick and choose and test individual coolers from this list. And if we know that cooler A, B and C are not able to keep the CPU from exploding, well then everything below that won't be either. The same thing the other way around. If D, E and F are okay, well then it's pretty safe to say that everything above that will be fine too. And all we actually need to do is to find out the exact moment where the list splits into yays and nays. Now the last thing we need to set is a max temperature that the CPU can get before we say the cooler is defeated. And I would say 100 degrees C is a nice value. It's definitely not good, don't get me wrong, but it's given that we are pushing max performance 24-7, which usually the CPUs tend to not to do, I think it's a pretty safe metric. So I guess let's just get to it. For some stupid reason, I started testing individual coolers going from uh, top down, which was rather stupid, given that it was pretty clear that a 420 AIO will be capable of handling a mid-range chip. Yeah, really, really my bad here. After realizing that I'm about to waste half my day and at least three or four tubes of thermal paste, I started to drop rather quickly in this list. But very surprisingly to me, we reached the outer border extremely quickly like the Scythe Mugen 5 Ref C. This one managed to keep the 13600K at 96 degrees C whilst it was pushing that 183 watts load. Not that 96 is good, but it is still survivable. Going down from there, things like the Dark Rock 4 were a degree harder and the Nokia NHC14S barely managed to pull it off. But then, then we found the exact point at which the list was done. The Be Quiet Pure Rock Black exactly 100 degrees C. How nice that we found something that hit that number on the freaking digit. So this is the first like theoretical list. Under the assumption that the CPU is pushing max turbo boost speed at auto voltage 24 seven, this is what will be able to keep it below 100 degrees C, given that we are in a 23 degrees C room. A bit sad, but definitely not as depressing as I kind of feared it would look like. That being said, a few things here. Our entire test was conducted in an open air, so no case environment, and we are in a 23 degrees C room. So if you live in a place where it's like 30 degrees all the time, or if you have a case, or if you have a case that is built like a brick wall, well, those numbers will worsen for you. 
But also keep in mind that I pushed everything what this CPU is capable of before we get into overclocking territory. But if you just let it do its own thing, it will not stay at that amount of heat for a long time. It won't necessarily thermal throttle, but things like, for example, Intel speed step will just push everything down after like a minute. And to be exact, it will push from those 183 to 160 watts down. And to give you an example, our Pure Rock 2 then dropped down to 95 degrees C, like instantly. So that's a huge deal. So please keep in mind that the list we created here is rather conservative, but I can still stand behind that. If I am deciding for a cooling solution, I don't want to get anything that may cripple my chip under some circumstances. No, what I want to have is a system that can run always at max performance, at max boost, at max everything, without the risk of it ever throttling down. So, although the list was already quite conservative, it's actually not conservative enough for me. Considering that cases tend to add heat instead of removing it, here is like my adjusted list, the, the coolers that I would be comfortable using if I would be selling a PC using a 13600K. Oh, and before I forget it, if you lie below that I'm okay with this line, don't worry that much. If you are gaming, for example, you are not pushing even nearly the amount of power that we did today, not, not even close. But still, if you are looking for a appropriate cooler for a 13600K, yeah, try staying in the green area. No need to get something that you cannot really rely on under certain conditions. But okay, I guess this should be it for today and my unhealthy obsession of letting Fermax CPU burner run wild. But if you want to keep watching, have a look at our minimum cooler video on the 7950X. If you ever had issues with your masculinity, just see how short that list is. By the way, we also have a Discord server and it's really filling up, so if you want to join, the link is in the description below. Anyway, thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.